Hey guys, it's Dean Explosion back here today, bringing you guys another album review. This will be a 2016 release, and one of my personal favorite um, uh, anticipated releases of this year. I will, today I will be reviewing Megadeth's Dystopia. <clears throat> Just gonna give you guys a little bit of notes and some uh, album information. Um, uh, this is their um, this is their 15th studio album. Uh, their label for this is Tradecraft Records, and this album was released uh, January 22nd, 2016, which was yesterday. Um, <clears throat> there's 11 tracks on here. The lineup for this is uh, Kiko Lurero, who was who is the guitarist for the Brazilian power metal band Angra, who replaced and Kiko replaced uh, Chris Broderick. After Chris Broderick played on uh, albums like Endgame, uh, 13, stuff like that. Dave Mustaine, obviously on guitars and vocals. Chris Adler, who is the who was the drummer, who is the drummer for Lamb of God, and uh, David Ellison on bass. And quick uh, quick thing, uh, Chris Adler replaced uh, Sean Drover, who was a uh, drummer for Megadeth for a while, ever since. Uh, Sean did drums ever since the system has failed. This is the first album in a while without him. <clears throat> and the total length of this album is about 46 minutes and 46 seconds. But anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to go track for track on here, so strap in. There's a lot of tracks, it might take a while. Track one The Threat is Real. This was a really simple yet really catchy track that kind of kind of gives you a look on what you're about to expect on this album and that's just straight up thrash so I gave that track a 4 out of 5 <clears throat> track 2 the title track Dystopia I really really enjoyed this track it's got a lot of catchy melodies and catchy riffs with very very impressive guitar work from uh, Kaiko and uh, Dave Mustaine and I just really enjoy this track. This is one of my favorite tracks off the song, so I give this a 4.5 out of 5. An awesome track. Uh, track 3, Fatal Illusion. This is my personal favorite track on here. This was this was the first track I ever heard off this album when this track was released back in October, I believe. Somewhere around there. But um, <clears throat> this was a very catchy, very thrashy thrashy song with impressive bass work by David Ellison. He's just a great bass player. And groovy drum work by Chris Adler and like all the leads. This was just a great, great album, great song that got me so excited for this album. That's why I gave this track a 5 out of 5. Um, the fourth track, Death From Within. <clears throat> the fourth track, uh, Death From Within, this was a um, <clears throat> another very, very good, <clears throat> very, very good Megadeth track. It just has, uh, you know, that real Megadeth vibe to it that I really, really enjoyed. <clears throat> Drive with some very head-bangable and catchy riffs and just wicked leads, as always. It's a Megadeth album. You're expecting some wicked leads. <clears throat> Track five, um, "Bullet to the Brain." This, this to me, this track was kind of more has like its weak points sometimes, but I still found this a really, really enjoyable track, and it does have its moments. That's why I give it a three out of five. <clears throat> track six, "Post American World." This was a very solid Megadeth track with some very impressive leads, impressive bass work, and impressive drumming. And that's why I give this a uh, four, four, 4 out of 5. Track 7, Poisonous Shadows. The, I really like the, orchest the orchestral elements they add to this song. This is one more of their like slower songs. This track was like 6 minutes long. And uh, I really did enjoy this track. I just didn't really like Dave Mustaine's whispered vocals that much. So I wasn't really a huge fan of that. But... This is a good track, I tried to give it a 4 out of 5. <clears throat> track 8, Con Conquer or Die, which is an instrumental track. 
it just really, really shows the great dual leads that Kiko and uh, Dave Mustaine have. It really gives them time to shine and off the bass work and the drum. And I just found out that was just a great, great track. That's why I give it a four and a half out of five. <clears throat> track nine, Lying in State. This is one of the more uh, thrashier songs on this uh, album. Album. It's a really short. Well, no, it's not really really short. It's like a two minutes long. The short, but really really sweet track that kind of brings back you know that rust in peace, like rust in peace, but you know so far so good. So what kind of feeling to it? And I really really enjoyed. I gave that track a five out of five. It was an awesome track. <clears throat> uh, track ten, the Emperor. This is. Really, <clears throat> this track felt to me to be like their weakest track on here, The Emperor. But, uh, you know, the leads and the impressive bass work kept me well interested, but still, it would not be a track I would go back to. That's why I give it a 2.5 out of 5. And the last track, Foreign Policy. This was, I really enjoyed this track. This was a fear cover. And the Fear was like this uh, punk band that was back in the 80s and the 70s. <clears throat> but it, was, it wasn't like just like copy and paste it. They had like their own like the signature Megadeth touch to it that I just really, really enjoyed. That's why I give it a 4.75 out of 5. So, um, <clears throat> to sum it all up, I'm tired, I'm wasting your time with all that talking, but. This is going to please, this dystopia is going to please a lot of Megadeth fans. And this album is definitely going to stick out in Megadeth's discography. I mean, after Super Collider, I mean, I know that people really didn't have that, that much high expectations for dystopia when they first released to the press that, you know, they were going, they were going to, um, uh, <clears throat> they were working on a new album back in... 2014, I believe, where I uh, kind of, you know, announced that, but this album is going to gain back a lot of respect from a lot of Megadeth fans, and I know this album has gained back my respect for Megadeth. This album is just filled with just <clears throat> the signature Megadeth riffs. And that heavy head bang, the, 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 it's like Mega Death rips with a lot of awesome stuff added to it that makes you want to head bang. I don't know how to describe it. <clears throat> and just thrashy and amazing drum work from Chris Adler on there. His his drum work was just excellent on here. And David Ellison's bass work did not go on her. You could hear it. It's just beefy and chunky bass tone that just adds so much depth to the album that I really, really enjoyed. And like I said before many, many times, the dual leads from Kiko Guerrero and Dave Mustaine were just fucking insane and impressive. But like I said before, it's a mega death album. You're going to expect some wicked fucking leads. <clears throat> and they're just played in like the perfect mo moment. But like, I only want to point out though, Dave's vocals kind of sound a bit more raspier on this album. It's probably due to, you know, him becoming, he's starting, you know, I think he's like in his like 40s or his 50s now, so he's starting to get old. But me personally, I really did enjoy his vocals on this album. And I think like his vocals just added more aggression and attitude to it that I actually really did to this album that makes it feel more like a real thrash album. But, <clears throat> this album still has its weak moments, but, weak moments and a little bit of filler to it, but it's not really that bad, so, <clears throat> I mean, it's not really, like, so bad that it's cringeworthy, it's like, uh, yeah, you know, whatever, I'm not really gonna go back to it, but, <clears throat> and the production-wise on here, they did not make this album too clean, I mean, with like Megadeth being like one of the biggest names in thrash metal, <clears throat> you know, you know, you know, production is gonna be good because that's what fans want. Because you know, yada yada yada. But the producer for this album, I forgot his name, but 
he didn't over polish the album and it just has that you know nice crisp production that no one can complain about and, but and the production whoever did it was did a great job on the production but all in all I feel like Megadeth after their crash with Super Collider they got back on the road and they're back on the right track <clears throat> and showing fans you know like the, you know they still got it but we all know it's not ill we all know that Megadeth really ain't gonna make another you know like Rust in Peace or uh, Peace Sells But Who's Bot buying kind of album because those those albums I don't think Megadeth will ever make an album as good as those albums but this album still stands out in the modern Megadeth discography <clears throat> and I just believe I know this isn't their bestest album but I still thought for 2016 this is, was a fucking damn good album that I really had a lot of fun listening to and like tracks like Fatal Illusion, Dystopia, Lying in State, Death from Within are just amazing Megadeth tracks. So they'll always be like gems <clears throat> to me personally because I really enjoy those tracks. But this album will put a lot of faith in fans to restore faith in Megadeth. And that's why for my final score, I give Megadeth's Dystopia an 84 out of 100. Gotta give a thumbs up for Megadeth. They still got it. Alright. <clears throat> that was my album review for Megadeth's Dystopia. I really hope you enjoy it. Like, comment, subscribe if you want. And as always, keep it metal.